Hi there, one of the great things about the Fairlight page in DaVinci Resolve is that you can actually record automation for things like track volume or panning in real time as you play back through the timeline. This lets you use your ears and your human intuition to change volume levels in real time to create the feeling that you want. This approach can be quicker and more intuitive than having to go and draw automation keyframes for things like volume, play back that section, change them, and then keep looping through and making minor changes. You can automate loads of different parameters in real time in the Fairlight page. In this video, we're gonna be looking at automating the track volume. The process is very similar for the other things. So let's head into Resolve here. So here we've got this single track open in the Fairlight page. This is just a talking head video of me talking. Currently, we're in clip editing mode. That means this line here is affecting the clip level volume for this individual clip and not for the entire track. Just undo that. In this video, we're going to be looking at track level automation. So if we had multiple clips on this single track, the track automation would affect all of the clips. The first thing you need to do is toggle on automation. You can do that by clicking this button here. And when we do this, a couple of things are gonna happen. I'll just click it. First of all, that button turns red. And notice in the tracks here, we've got this icon here and in the channel strip, the same icon. We'll come back to that in a second. Also notice in the track here that we've got this additional drop down displayed now. Currently this is set to none, so we won't be recording any automation. This dropdown lets you choose the parameter that you want to change in real time as you play back the timeline. As you can see here, there's loads of different things that you can automate, including panning and EQ. In this video, we're gonna concentrate on this fader level parameter. Notice once I change this to any other value other than none, the clip has dulled. It's gone from a bright green to a duller green. That's one way to know that we're working with track level automation and not clip level automation. If I just set this back to none, then we're going to return to clip level automation. And if I set this to fader, we're now in channel level automation. You can toggle every track back to clip level by toggling this automation switch. Notice now we don't get this drop down here. So we'll toggle automation on once again and make sure this is set to a value other than none, in this case, fader level. By default, the automation controls are hidden. To actually show them, you need to click this button here to toggle the automation controls. If I click this, notice we get all of these controls here, which let us control how the automation will be recorded as we're playing back. At the minute, notice this touch setting here is set to off. So if I play this back with the touch setting set to off and then alter this fader level up and down, you can see it's altering the overall volume level for the track, but if I stop playback, you can see that we haven't actually recorded any changes that I just made while this was playing back. That's because when touch mode is set to off, we won't record any automation. To actually record automation, we need to set one of these other three values. In this video, we're just going to be using latch, so click that to select it, and we're going to set this on stop behavior to hold. The next thing we need to choose is what we actually want to record during automation. You can do that by clicking one or more of these buttons here. In this case, we're automating the fader volume, so we're going to select fader. We'll just go to the start here by tapping home on the keyboard, and then what we're going to do is arm this track for recording. You can either do this by clicking this button here, notice it turns red and this line goes red, or you can click the similar looking button here in the channel strip. As well as this line going red to tell us that this parameter is armed for recording, notice the channel fader here has also turned red. This means it's armed for recording. Knowing how to elevate the audio in your video and really make it shine will give you a massive advantage over other editors and also give your videos the professional polish they deserve. Click the first link in the video description or scan this QR code to learn more about my Fairlight course. All right, back to the video. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to hit spacebar to play or click play to start playback. Watch what happens now when I alter this fader up and down. You can see now as I'm altering this in real time as the track's playing back, we're actually altering the parameter for this fader volume. We're automating this parameter over time. When you're finished, hit stop. You can see now this line has turned green to tell us we've actually got automation for this fader level parameter. And also the knob here on the fader itself has turned green telling us that we've got automation recorded for the fader level parameter. What we can do now is just play this back in real time. As this is playing back, I want you to keep an eye on this fader. It's actually going to go up and down in real time as it hits the automation. There's a lot more you can control when writing automation depending on the combination of all of these different options. And you can also write automation for other things like panning and effects. I go into more detail on these in my Fairlight course. For example, you could change this automation to pan. And now when you're changing the panning for this track, 
it's going to change the automation. In this video, we've been automating that fader level up and down to control the track volume, but there is a difference between volume and loudness. That's what you'll learn about in this next video. I'm Jason Roberts, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.